Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And it's time for another kit review. And today we're looking at Mobius's 53 foot smooth side trailer. Now, this has already been re reviewed by Right On Replicas about two years ago. And so I'm not trying to do anything new here. The reason I have this kit is I need it for a project I'm planning on working on fairly soonish. So I thought, you know, yes, a lot of people have probably seen the review on right on replicas. Uh, but on the other hand, if you look at the, the, the total viewership of modeling channels is certainly at least 150,000 people. So given that about 9,000 people watched his review of this model, Probably there's not going to be a huge amount of overlap between those who watched his video and those people who subscribe to my channel. And as well as that, Right On Replicas does the slideshow style of uh, video. Not everybody likes that. So for those people who don't like the slideshow type of video, they can watch the review here. This is still available. Um, it was a fairly new arrival at my local hobby shop, so it should still be available from distributors. And Mobius has really kind of come to the rescue of truck modelers who are interested in more modern subjects. I mean, instead of just uh, sticking with trucks that were, you know, from the 60s, 70s, maybe early 80s, we have a lot of newer trucks from Mobius. So we're going to take a look at this. And I apologize for any awkwardness because, of course, this is hard to get on camera. I've got the camera quite a bit farther away than what we're used to dealing with here. So you can see it's got a nice, beautiful picture on the cover here. And not much different going on on this side. But if we go to the back, you can see we've got a little blurb here telling us about the model. And the interesting thing about this is it comes with a reefer option. And unlike the earlier uh, truck that was a, a different finish on the side, uh, this one also comes with um, a roll-up door. Their earlier 53-foot trailer only had barn doors. Barn doors are the type of doors where you have two large panels hinged at the sides and they'll either have a single locking bar per door or two locking bars per doors um, and there is an important difference with those and I think in the instructions they tell you if you're doing an insulated trailer you should be using the barn doors Otherwise, you can use the roll-ups. This isn't quite true in reality. There are insulated trailers which use roll-up doors and, you know, as well as double-style doors. And that basically comes down to uh, the preference of the shipper and the company that's, uh, that re that's running the trailer. And basically, what it comes down to is... Um, probably I'm thinking a roll-up door is more expensive, but it does have a couple of advantages. The first is you can back up to somebody's dock and they don't have to break the seal until, and, uh, you know, they can, they can break the seal literally from the loading dock. They don't have to go down in the rain or snow or hurricane or whatever's going on in order to break the seal. And that's a big advantage for a lot of receivers. And as well as that, the roll-up door has more structural integrity at the back. If the door is in the up position, the trailer still retains most of its structural integrity. Whereas with barn doors, when the barn doors are open, there's a lot of flex with the back of the truck. So that's another reason that some trucking companies prefer the roll-up doors, even though they're a more expensive option. So let's take a look inside, see what we get inside this huge kit. 
Once again, this is pretty awkward because I'm reaching around my camera stand, which is quite a bit farther than normally I have it set. Comes with this cardboard packing thing here that basically keeps the, the box from collapsing, which is a nice touch. Very quickly, we've got a chrome sprue here with the wheels. We got a bag with the tires. What's nice is they're not on an octopus. They're already trimmed off. This sprue here has the reefer and it actually has the barn doors as well and the nose. We have a clear sprue and we're going to take a closer look at these a little bit later when I get them out of the bags. This one has the fuel tank and it has the landing gear and part of the rear suspension. This bag has the roll-up doors and it has a lot of the wheel parts. And then in some of the longest parts bags you'll ever see, we have the sides and we have the top and bottom. We have a decal sheet. Now this one is not as nice as the decal sheet that came in the their previous trailer. That one had some uh, herb decals as well as some other decals in it. It would have been nice to see that uh, decal sheet in this kit. And then of course we've got a colorful manual here. We'll take a look at the manual first. And this is something that really sets Mobius models apart from most other kit manufacturers, with the possible exception of modern Ravel kits that have now gone to a colorful manual and some of the Japanese kit makers where everything is all full color. But when you compare to the black and white sheet that used to be the norm. So, of course, we've got, you know, your normal... You know, safety warnings here, don't eat the parts, uh, painting your kit, decal application, you know, is nothing too different here. And of course here it says, um, up in the corner, it says this kit includes optional parts to build a reefer trailer. Best to decide at which point whether your trailer is going to be dry goods or refrigerated. So... This is something that you want to know in advance. And especially this first step here, you're going to have to, I believe, uh, drill out some holes for those reefer parts to go on. If you can build a plastic box, you can put this kit together. And here we've got the rear suspension. And as you can see, they've got, it has a, an airbag suspension, air ride suspension, which is fairly common these days. And I believe this represents a Great Dane trailer. If we look very carefully at the mud flaps, you can see the trademark of Great Dane. Here you can see the, the center part here has the decaling. And once again, uh, a little bit of a disappointment if you were expecting to see the giant decals that were available in the previous one. All this basically has is you've got your your markings here for size or for the length of the trailer. You've got the reflectors for the side and a couple other small markings. And of course here we once again we can see the Great Dane logo right there. And once again for the dry goods trailer, they're saying, oh, the roll-up door. And for the refrigerated trailer, oh, burn doors. That isn't necessarily the case, okay? Um, there are reefers that have roll-ups. And, of course, dry goods trailers use both types. As a matter of fact, they both use both types of doors. So moving on, we've got the assembly of the wheels, the landing gear, putting those parts on the underside. And then 
some final assembly, and then it has the refrigerated parts going on here. And then they've got some suggested paint colors. All right, time to meet the parts. Now you get two of these. These are the sides of the trailer. And by the way, they really take up the entire length and almost the entire width of the box. And if we move in close, you can see it has some really nice rivet detail here. And as well, there are some significant pegs which are intended to engage into the floor and the ceiling, which is nice. So you're not looking at trying to line up two floppy pieces of plastic and, and get them lined up. So we're only going to look at one because the other side is a mirror image. This next part here, sorry, that is the side. This next part is the roof. There's not a lot going on on the actual top. Now, I don't know if this is a, a fiberglass roof. It could well be, in which case it might be a really very long continuous piece. Not a whole lot going on detail-wise on the sides, but then you're not talking a very interesting part anyway on the real truck. It does have a fair amount of stiffness to it. Mind you, once the whole thing is put together, it will form a very stiff box. Next part, of course, is the underframe. And towards the rear, you see there are areas that are basically, we won't say milled out, but this is where the suspension will be glued in place. We come up at the other end, we have the nose of the trailer. And this is where the fifth wheel would be attached. And let's see. Okay, I'm going to have to put my fingers on either side here so that the camera will focus. You can see we've got the fastener detail running along the side rails of the trailer. Which is very nicely done. And you can also see this is the the door end of the trailer. Moving on to the smaller sprues. This sprue has the reefer unit. This is a very modern reefer. Basically this is the way reefers have looked at least for the last 20 odd years with a nice rounded front. This is probably a Thermo King. You can see here the side panels for the breathing and if we focus, if we focus, cameras do not like white plastic. You can see here we've got the mud flaps and the Great Dane logo is molded right in there. And I'm not going to say that the flaps are super, super thin, but they're a lot better than what was found in a lot of truck kits of old. This next sprue, we have the nose of the trailer. And you can see we have the fitting for the air brakes and the electrical. And I believe on the back here, we have some divots which mark where you're going to want to drill to install that reefer unit. The second part on this sprue is the barn doors. And this style just simply has the two locking bars. It would have been nice if they had have given us as additional parts a second set of locking bars that could have been glued on here. Because there are a lot of trailers that have two per door for a total of four. They're not all like this where it's just, um, just two locking bars. And as I said earlier, this type of locking bar and door arrangement. The seal must be broken before the truck can back up against the dock. Well, I mean, you can back up against the dock, but you're not going to be able to open these doors until, you know, once you're up against that dock. So that's one of the reasons why a lot of companies prefer the roll-up doors. 
The next sprue, well, it says sprue, but I'm assuming that these were once all one big sprue. And they've simply chopped it to get it into the box. And these are the chrome wheels. And I'm not sure how common chrome wheels are on trailers. There's an awful lot out there that have aluminum wheels. So you might want to uh, strip the chrome from these and paint them aluminum. They could also be painted white. Certainly a very common wheel option. Moving on to our bag of wheels. These are of a medium softness. They are branded Energy. And they have the size of the tire molded in. Or you can flip it over and have a no-name option. They are nicely molded and there's no seam that has to be sanded off. There is just, just the hint of where the molding gate was. But otherwise these are really nice. Our next sprue has the fuel tank for the reefer. And this is the, the tail light and bumper assembly. Certainly looks the part. And it looks like these were once uh, one big sprue as well. And this portion of the sprue has the landing gear assembly. Let's flip it over. Here's the public side that you would normally see. And here's the winding mechanism for raising that up. And of course we have the, the main frame from the rear suspension. Here are some other parts of our suspension. Here is another option for a fuel tank, which is interesting. Or no, this is the air tank for the brakes. Yes, this would be in amongst the rear axle, I believe. We have two of this sprue, and the parts obviously are duplicated between them. We have the airbags for the air ride suspension. We've got a couple of inner wheels, and these look like brake parts. Um, everything looks fairly nicely molded. There are a number of these strips here inside the kit, and they believe uh, go along the sides of the trailer for extra detail. These are the transparencies, and they're all molded in clear, so you're going to have to break out your Tamiya transparent red and transparent orange. Not a big deal. And finally, we have the roll-up door, and I'm just going to focus in here. Now, these are typically an aluminum assembly. And because where aluminum is welded together, it's actually weaker than where it isn't. You can see that they have this, this strap here on the corners. And basically that's an aluminum plate that's been welded into the corners in order to give some structural rigidity to the corners of the roll-up frame. And of course, the details are separate. They're going to want to roll up. So having, oh, there's the details right there. Having unloaded more than my share of trailers, most of them with roll up doors, I can safely say that this is pretty much what I've seen in most of my career working in the food industry. So this wraps up a review of Mobius's 53 foot smooth side trailer. If you wanna check out Brad Hare's review of the uh, Mobius Models 50-foot trailer with not the smooth size. It has some corrugations on it. Um, that's also an interesting review. I will try to put a link in the description. Basically, that version of the kit has different sides. It does not come with a roll-up door, but it does come with some really large decals on the sides. So... 
I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this review and are patient with the fact that right on replicas already did a review and build but like I said not everybody likes the slideshow format this is and I'm trying not to uh, anger Murphy of Murphy's Law but this hopefully is going to be built in the next few months and uh, and it I, I had a specific need for this trailer and that's why I ended up buying this kit so thanks for watching until next time just keep on modeling <laughs>